Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at graphical inequalities. Now, due to the nature of this, obviously being on graphs and on the screen, it'd be, it'd be, you know, try and make as best notes as you can, but I am going to link a worksheet in the description for the four questions at the end. I'm going to run through three example questions and then the four questions to finish off with. They're all going to be on the worksheet, so you can obviously follow the link in the description and follow along with those, and obviously you'll be able to do those then on the actual worksheet. Uh, but what I would suggest is obviously making sure that you're quite happy with uh, coordinate geometry before this, so drawing straight line graphs. Uh, obviously I'll link that video in the description as well so if you're not sort of clued up on that I would suggest checking that out first because I'm going to assume a bit of knowledge on this that you're already able to draw straight line graphs um, and obviously we're just going to be looking at the inequality side of it and finding the regions. So we're going to get started on this question uh, it says on the grid shade the region that satisfies these inequalities. Now when it comes to an inequality, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to forget about the inequality for the moment. I'm just going to draw these as line equations. So for this first one here, where we've got y is greater than negative 4, I'm just going to imagine that's the line y equals negative 4. So y equals minus 4 is a straight line going horizontally through y is negative 4. So y is negative 4 is down here, and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line, okay, going across, here we go, and I'm going to draw it obviously in the other direction and extend it all the way through the graph. Okay, so as you see, I've drawn a dotted line or a dashed line, and we're going to draw these dashed lines for any of these inequalities that uh, have obviously the symbol without the equal to symbol. Now, if it did have the equal to symbol, again, that's got more ink on it, so the line would actually be a straight line as, uh, as I've just drawn there. But if it doesn't have the extra ink, then you leave that ink off the line, you just draw the dashed lines instead. Okay, so there we go, that's my first one. Now the next one there, we've got x equals two instead of x is less than two, so we'll draw that in. So x equals two is here. And again, just going up and down through that point, so we'll start down the bottom. There we go, and just draw a nice straight line, obviously using a ruler and a pencil here, going up through x equals two. Now we've got one more line. So we've got y equals two x plus one. There we go, I'm going to draw that line in. So you can draw a table for these, so you might want to draw a little x and y table to get your coordinates, but I'm just going to apply a little bit of a trick here, just you know, take it a bit quicker. So obviously the y-intercept is 1, so I'm going to start off at 1 on the y-intercept, and then my gradient here is 2. So I'm going to go across 1, up 2. There we go, across 1, up 2. I'm going to follow that pattern going backwards. So back to that y-intercept, I'm going to go across left 1, down 2, which gets me here, left 1, down 2, left 1, down 2. There we go, and I'm just going to draw my nice dotted line going through all these points and extending it all the way through the graph. There we go, and if you're not sure on how I've just drawn that line there, obviously I'll link the video in the description for drawing straight line graphs and that whole series, and you can have a look at that and just understand the y-intercept there and, uh, and how to go about drawing these graphs via the gradient. So there we go, we've got all these regions put out, and we've got quite a lot of regions here. I've got this region here, which I'll call region 1. We've got region 2 here, I've got 3 here, making this triangular shape. We've got 4 over here five down here and six over here. So we've got all these different regions and we need to figure out which region uh, we need to shade to actually satisfy these inequalities. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all this working out here. I'm just gonna talk about how to actually approach that. Now, a lot of the time is that triangle created in the middle, but it's not gonna be necessarily that point there, but it's gonna be the first one that I'm gonna try. Now, in order to make sure that we know exactly which region to shade, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a coordinate within that region. So I'm gonna start with that region, I'm gonna go for a different color here. I'm gonna go for this coordinate within the triangle, which is the coordinate one, one there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sub this coordinate into these inequalities. I'm just gonna make sure that they actually meet the criteria of the inequality. So the first one there says Y has got to be bigger than negative negative four. So obviously looking at our coordinate here, the y coordinate is one. So if I sub that in, look, one is bigger than minus four. That is a true statement, that is correct. So we can tick that off, happy with that, it works in that inequality there. If we move on to the next one, x has got to be less than two, well x is one. So we've got one has got to be less than two, one is less than two, that's a correct statement as well. So that works, we'll tick that off. And then for the last one, we've got y is less than 2x plus 1. Now y is 1, so it's, we've got 1 for y, and that's got to be less than 2x plus 1, or two lots of 1, the x-coordinate 1, plus 1. And if we obviously work that out there, 2 times 1 is 2, plus the 1 is 3, so we've got a statement there, 1 is less than 3. That is correct as well, there we go. So obviously that is a correct statement, all three of them are correct, so that coordinate there is going to be this shaded region. So we would shade that in, and obviously if it says to shade it or if it says to put a letter in there, you would do so. But that's obviously the region that we're looking for, and it's always the one I try out first. 
But there we go, that's how to do an inequality, uh, graphical inequalities there and finding the shaded region. Obviously we could have picked a coordinate that didn't work and we'll have a look at some intersect where they don't work uh, and obviously figure out where, we can, where we're going to find some other regions if it's not that shape that's created via these lines. But there we go, let's have a look at another question. Right, okay, so another similar question. Look on the grid, shade the regions that satisfy these inequalities. And obviously these inequalities do have that equal to symbol underneath. So remembering if there's more ink on the inequality, we're going to put more ink in the line. So we're not going to do a dot dotted, dotted line this time. We're going to do a, a nice straight line with no gaps in. So x is greater than or equal to 2. So x equals 2 is the line I'm going to draw. x equals 2. So x equals 2, obviously here is where x equals 2. So it's just a nice straight line up through x equals 2. On to y equals 1 for the one below, y equals 1, and that's going to go across here. There we go for our second line. And then for the next one here, we've got x plus y equals 6. Now you can rearrange this one, but when these sort of line equations do look a little bit different to normal, uh, I'd like to take an, 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 a little easy approach for these. I'd like to think, okay, what if x is 0, what does y have to be? What if x is 0, look, 0 plus y has to equal 6. So what's y going to have to be when x is 0? y is going to have to be 6, isn't it? So there we go, that's the coordinate just up here. And we've got that coordinate 0, 6, and that is those two coordinates there that add up to 6. So that works, that gets us one there. Let's think of it the other way around. What about when y is 0? Well, x plus 0 has to equal 6. So again, 6 down here as well. So it's a nice one actually, when we get x plus y equals a number, it just joins up those two numbers, obviously thinking about that logic there, that when x is 0, y has to be 6, and when y is 0, x has to be 6. I think I, think I said that the right way around there, there we go, let's join this up, and there we go. And that is our third line there. Again, you could actually take a different approach to that. I think it's unnecessary for this one if you take that logical approach. But you could rearrange it so it's y equals mx plus c. So you could have y equals, take the x over to the other side, you'd have minus x plus 6 if you keep it in that y, uh, y equals mx plus c format. So you have a gradient of negative 1 there and a y-intercept of 6, look. So you could actually do that starting at the 6 on the y-intercept and then going across one down one, across one down one, and following that pattern all the way through. But obviously, there we go, that's our three lines drawn. Now let's pick a coordinate again. I'm going to start with this one in the middle. I think it's going to it's going to come up at some point where it's not this one. But let's just check that one first as it's probably the easiest one for us to check. Now that coordinate there is the coordinate 3, 2. So 3, 2 is the coordinate I'm going to check. Obviously x is 3, y is 2. I'm going to sub that into these three inequalities here. So let's get rid of all that working out and see if it works. So x is 3. So we've got 3 is greater than or equal to 2. That's correct. So that works. We can tick that off. On to the next one, we've got y is bigger than or equal to, or greater than or equal to 1, well y is 2, so we've got 2 is greater than or equal to 1, that's a correct statement as well, so we can tick that one off, and then just check our last one here, x plus y is less than or equal to 6, so x is 3, y is 2, so 3 plus 2 is less than or equal to 6, well 3 plus 2 is 5, so that is also a correct statement as well. There we go, so we can definitely shade that region in, that's the one that satisfies these inequalities here. There we go, and again obviously if it just says to label it anything, obviously just make sure you stick that in there. Right, let's have a look at one more question then before you start having a go. Right, okay, so three more here. On the grid, shade the region that satisfies these inequalities. So for the first one, we've got y is less than 3x, or y equals 3x is the one we're going to plot. So that doesn't have a y-intercept, so that y-intercept is going to be 0. I should be careful with my language there. It does have a y-intercept, it's just that it's not a whole number there. We've just got the 0 as the y-intercept. So we're going to start at 0. It's got a gradient of 3. So I'm going to go across 1, up 3. Across 1, up 3. I'm going to follow that pattern going backwards. So left 1, down 3. Left 1, down 3. And there we go. And that's our first line there. y is equal to 3x. And it's going to be a dotted line. As we've not got the extra ink on the inequality, it's going to be... Uh, less than 3x, there we go, so let's just draw that in as best you can, obviously using a ruler and a pencil. Now we've got the next one, so y equals 0, that's an interesting one, y equals 0 is actually the x-axis, it's just another name for the x-axis, so we can go across here, that's the line going through all the points where x equals 0, sorry y equals 0, there we go, going across, there's our second inequality, and our last one here, which isn't the nicest, we've got 4x plus 3y equals 12 and we need to draw that. Now again one that looks a bit dodgy so I'm going to apply that same logic. I'm going to go when x is 0 so we've got 0 plus 3y equals 12 because 4 lots of 0 is 0 there so 0 plus 3y equals 12. Well th 3 times the number has to equal 12 so y has to equal 4 for that one. There we go. So when x is 0 y is 4 so we just need to find that coordinate. So 0 4 is there and the next one let's do that the other way around. So when y is 0, what's x going to have to be? So we have 4x 
plus 3 lots of 0, so 0 equals 12. Well, 4 times the number has to equal 12, so that has to equal 3, so x has to be 3 there. So when y is 0, x is 3, and that is there. I'll draw a bit of a bigger cross so we can actually see that. There we go. So we can draw that in, taking that logical approach there. Not the easiest one for me to draw on the screen here, so I'm going to do my best, but obviously you will have a ruler and a pencil, so all you have to do is join those two together and draw a nice straight line. There we go, going through that. Right, there we go. Obviously, I've just extended a little bit past the line, past the graph there, but that doesn't really matter. Let's get rid of that. Right, okay, so we've got a basic outline of what it would look like. Obviously, yours would be a bit more accurate here when you're using a ruler and a pencil, but that is that last line drawn. Now, you could have taken a different approach for that one again. You don't have to take this approach. Just remember, to get that into the form y equals mx plus c, we'd have to take away the 4x from both sides. So we'd have 3y equals negative 4x plus 12. And then we'd have to divide both sides by 3. So we'd end up with y equals negative 4 over 3 divided by 3, x plus 4. There we go. And you could actually plot the graph from there. Just remembering what that means. It means there's a y-intercept of 4, which we already have. And then that gradient there just means we've got a rise of 4 and a run of 3. Obviously, it's going downwards. So we could go along 3, down 4, along 3, down 4. Obviously, just reversing the idea of the gradient there. But again, obviously, if you want to look into these gradient uh, bits a little bit more and understanding these line equations, do check out those videos in the description and look at that coordinate geometry series. That's going to really help with understanding that. But there we go. I like quite like just taking the logical approach and imagining one of the coordinates is 0 and finding the other coordinate that matches and then just joining them up with a ruler. It does work for all of these. Right, so let's get rid of all of these. We need to find our region then. So let's have a look. Now we've got a nice little coordinate inside. We've got 1, 1 there. So let's go for that inside the triangle. See if it works. So 1, 1. So x is 1, y is 1. So we've got 1 is less than 3 lots of 1. 1 is less than 3. Again, that's correct. So we can tick that off. The next one, we've got 1 is bigger than 0. Y is, zero, y is 1, sorry. So 1 is bigger than 0. That's correct. And onto the last one, 4 lots of 1 is 4 plus 3 lots of 1, which is 3, so 4 plus 3 is less than 12, and that's obviously 7 is less than 12, and that's correct as well. So we can tick that off, and there we go, that is our region, definitely correct there in the middle, again this little triangle in the inside. Right, there we go, so that is obviously how to draw inequalities on a graph and how to find the shaded region. Now, I ha as, as I said, I've linked in the description a uh, link for the worksheet for this uh, particular these next four particular questions. So make sure you've got that either printed off or just follow along with me, or you can even draw it out yourself if you've got squared paper. They're not particularly difficult to draw. Uh, I do actually tend to draw these myself anyway, just to get a good understanding. Of obviously, drawing the axes and getting it all plotted to scale. Okay, and making sure that you're aware of that. But let's get uh, let's have a look at this question now. Okay, so the first of these questions is here. So obviously if you've got this printed off or if you're going to draw it out, then pause the video here, have a go, see what you get, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Right, okay, so for the first one we've got y equals 1. So drawing that one in, and again we've got to have a dotted line for this one, so y equals 1, straight across there. The next one we've got x plus y is less than 5, so hopefully you remember that obviously just connects up the 5s. So thinking when one's 0, the other has to be 5. There we go, and we'll connect those up. And there's the next one. Again, you can write that equation out if you want, x plus y equals 5. And then we've got y is greater than 2x. So again, uh, starting at 0, no y, or the 0 y-intercept there, and a gradient of 2, so across 1 up 2, across 1 up 2, across 1 up 2. There we go, and following that pattern going backwards as well. And obviously then just joining that up with your dotted line. There we go. I tried to do that a little bit too fast there. There we go, as all joined up. Right, so we've got a little region in the middle there. Let's try that one out and see if it works. So 2, 2. Let's have a look. Just get rid of this working out down here. So we've got 2, 2. So x is 2 and y is 2. So we've got 2 is bigger than 1. That's fine. We've got 2 plus 2 is less than 5. That's fine as well. And then we've got 2 is greater than 2 lots of 2, 4. Right, so here we go. That one was OK. That one was OK. This one is definitely not. So if we think about what this means, look, in terms of the actual inequalities on the graph. Look, it, in terms of that first line, the y equals 0, it was OK. It has to be above that line. Look, we've got a point that's above that line. So e, any of these are OK at the moment. That could be OK, that could be OK, that could be OK. We know this one isn't because of the last one. Um, let's have a look. We've got x plus y is less than 5, which is obviously this line here. Let's label that x plus y 
is less than five. And that was on the, like, let's have a look, like the left hand side of it, uh, and it was okay. So actually that means that this one's now not okay, this one's not okay, but it must be this one. But let's just have a quick look and test a coordinate there. So all I thought about there is which side of the line was okay. So obviously uh, that, that um, inequality on the left there, the two plus two is less than five was okay. So it was okay to be on this bottom left, sort of, hold on, let's just point an arrow at it, this side of the line, but this side of the line here was not okay. So let's just have a pick of the coordinate. You don't have to take that a little, a little approach there, thinking about the sides of the line, but let's get rid of that, and let's just think about a coordinate over here. So we've got a nice coordinate here, I think, zero, three, you could pick any of them, but let's just try zero, three. So let's test these out, get rid of all this working out here. Let's just try it out in all three again. So zero, three. And there we go. So y is zero, uh, 3, sorry. So 3 is greater than 1. That's okay. We've got 0 plus 3 is less than 5. That's okay. And we've got 3 for y is greater than 2 lots of 0. So 3 is greater than 0. And there we go. They are all okay. So actually, yeah, we can shade this region here. All right, there we go that one there. So there we go, there's our first example of where it's not necessarily within the triangle. So hopefully that threw you there, well, obviously, because all of our previous ones were within the triangle, and obviously just showed you that you're gonna have to have a little look around and see where that region is. And it might be that you actually, you know, just test a few coordinates out in different places until you find it. But you can take that logical approach thinking about, okay, well, that inequality said that this side of the line was okay, and that just sort of narrows it down a little bit and thinking about the logic behind that. Let's have a look at a different one, our next question. Okay, so here's the next one. On the grid, shade the region that satisfies all these inequalities. So we've got um, the three inequalities on the left there. So obviously, pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so we've got x equals 4 as our first one. So x equals 4 is going to go up through here. There we go, there's our first one drawn. We've got 2x plus y is greater than 6. And I'm going to write this one out. So 2x plus y equals 6. So when x is 0, y has to be 6, 0 plus y equals 6, so y has to be 6. So when x is 0, y is 6, let's plot that one up there. Let's think about it the other way around. So uh, let's have a think what we're doing. So we're 2x plus 0 equals 6. So when y is 0, two lots of x has to equal 6, so x has to equal 3 there. So 0, 3, there's that one. There you go, and again, just using a ruler and a pencil, joining that up nice and neatly. And again, you could have rearranged that to y equals negative 2x plus 6, okay? Thinking about obviously rearranging the equation into y equals mx plus c. So we could have y equals negative 2x plus 6. And I'm going to do that just to get these coordinates a little bit better on the screen, but that's a gradient of negative 2. So from the y-intercept, I'm going to go across 1, down 2, across 1, down 2, across 1, down 2. There we go. And follow that pattern back up the other way. Just going to allow me to draw it a little bit more accurately on the screen. So here we go, joining that up. There we go, again, using these dotted lines because we haven't got the equal to symbol on there. And then we've got our last one, y equals a third x. There we go. So starting on the y-intercept, which is at zero, that's got a gradient of a third. So if it goes across one and up a third, that means by the time I go across three, it'll have gone up a full one. Okay, so every one across it goes up a third, if we kind of imagine that. There we go, and by the time I get three across, look, it hits that number one there, or up one. So I'm gonna go across three and up one, and I can't actually do the next one, I can kind of imagine it. Here we go, up a third, up a third, and following that pattern. Okay, I can't get it perfectly up a third, but there we go. And that is our final line there. There we go. So we're just going to join that up nice and neat with a ruler and a pencil again. There we go. And there are our three inequalities drawn on the graph. So let's pick a region and see if we can actually find where it goes. So it doesn't seem to be a nice coordinate within that little triangle that's drawn. So I'm going to pick one up here. I'm going to go for 3, 3. So subbing these points in then, we've got 3 is less than 4. That's okay. Two lots of three, so six plus three is greater than six, that's okay. And three is greater than a third of three. A third of three is one. Three is greater than one. Oh, there we go. So that actually ended up being the one straight away. I didn't actually know it was that one, but there we go. So this is our region here, this big sort of shape. There we go at the top there, that little quadrilateral that's kind of being formed. Okay, so there we go. Obviously, if you'd have picked the wrong uh, region there, you might have picked one that was wrong and had to test it out a few times, but that one seemed to work out quite nicely straight away. It's always nice when that happens. So there we go. That is uh, our second question. Let's have a look at our next one. 
Right, okay, so a slightly different question here. It says, Helen answered the following question. Shade the region defined by all these inequalities, and there are her three inequalities, and it says write down the two mistakes that Helen made. So what we're going to do really is we're just going to ignore the diagram for the moment, and we're just going to actually have a look at these three and draw them ourselves and actually see um, you know, what's gone wrong here or if anything has gone wrong. So I'm going to completely ignore what's on there. So the first one is x plus y is less than or equal to 6. That's quite a, a nice one there. We can imagine when one is 0, the other has to be 6. So if I was to draw this, this, it would go between 6 and 6. There we go, and I'll do that with a nice straight line. There we go. So the first thing that Helen's done wrong, look, she's plotted x plus y is, great, is less than or equal to 7. There we go, so that would be our first mistake. And we just write that down, look, and you can even draw it on the diagram just to show what you mean. So x plus y is less than or equal to 7, not x plus y is less than or equal to 6. There we go. So that's the first one we found. Right, we've got the next one. y is greater than or equal to naught. We need to draw the line y equals 0. So y equals 0, again, is the one we described, the x-axis. So we'll go along there, the x-axis. There's our next one. OK, maybe not immensely obvious here exactly what's happened. So let's have a look at the last one. The next one, y equals x plus 2. So that's a y-intercept of 2, which we've got here. Gradient of 1. So that's going up there as we've got that drawn, lovely. So that is the correct line. So that one's fine as well. So actually, look, it's this second line that we drew, this one here. So that's the line y equals 0. And if you have a look, look, she's actually got the region to the right of the y-axis, this one here. So she's plotted the line x is greater than or equal to 0. Or she's plotted the line x equals 0 rather than the line y equals zero, which is the one we're looking for. So obviously, as it says, y is equal to zero, she's obviously just imagine that that's the y axis, and actually that represents the x axis where y is equal to zero. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to zero, not y is greater than or equal to zero. There we go, so there's the, the two mistakes there. I mean, obviously she shaded the wrong region, but that's a bit, bit obvious. If you make another mistake, you are going to shade the wrong region. So we want to know why she shaded the wrong region, not just the fact that she's shaded the wrong place. Okay, so there's our two explanations for that particular question. Right, we're going to have a look at our last question then before we finish. Right, okay, so for this last question, it says write down the three inequalities that define the shaded region. So obviously we've got three lines, line equations that we need to draw here. I'm going to label them up. So we've got number one, this one here. We've got number two and number three. It doesn't really matter what order we do it in. But that line number one there is probably the easiest one for us to do. That line, if I write it with an equal sign, it goes through where y is negative two. So it's y equals negative two. We'll sort out the inequalities in a sec. For now, I just want to know what the line equations are. So we've got y equals negative two. Label that over there so I don't forget I've done that one. y equals negative two. Moving on to line two, it goes through a y-intercept of one. So we know it's y equals something plus one. Okay, obviously we can see that y-intercept just here. And then we just need to figure out what the gradient is. So every one across, it goes up a half. Let's have a look. So every, when you go two across, it goes up one. Here we are to get to that coordinate there. So to get to that one there, let's just think about what the gradient is. If I go across, draw a little triangle in. It's got a rise of one and a run of two. So rise over run or change in y over change in x gives us a half. So we've got y equals a half x plus one. There we are, so that is line equation two. y equals a half x plus one. There we go, that's our second equation. And for our third one, let's get rid of this working out in the middle. Our third one there has a y-intercept of zero. So it's y equals something x with nothing at the end. So y equals something x. We need to figure out what that gradient is. Let's have a look. So it goes across one, up one, cross one, up one, cross one, up one. There we are, so it's got a rise of one, a run of one, or a change in y of one, and a change in x of one, so a gradient of one. So that is y equals x, or one x. Okay, you won't be wrong for writing one x, but it's, we've, obviously we don't need to write the one there, so y equals x. There we go, and there's the equation of our third line. Now obviously we need to figure out how these inequality symbols are gonna work, and some people just like to take a logical approach to this, but I'm just gonna pick a coordinate. And I'm just going to test them out, okay? We're going to see, obviously, which statements are going to make that correct or true. Now, I'm going to pick one within the region. There's only one that really stands out to me is that one, or potentially, actually, this one here on the axes there. It doesn't really matter which one we choose, so I'm just going to go for that one. So that inequality, that I mean, that coordinate there, sorry, is negative 1 for the x-coordinate, 0, so minus 1, 0. So if I start putting those into my, into my uh, equations over here, and let's see what we get to make it true. So for the first one, we've got y equals negative 2. So 0 for y 
negative two, what symbol makes that correct? Zero is bigger than negative two. Right, so for our first, uh, in, uh, our first inequality that we're gonna write then, we're gonna have bigger than in there. So we've got y is greater than negative two. There we are, and that is for line one. Y is bigger than negative two. And obviously that should seem quite obvious because the region is above that line or greater than that line. So there we go, that should hopefully be quite logical. On to the next one, let's have a look. We've got zero, uh, so what's our coordinate again? Negative one and zero. So we're gonna put that into the next one. We've got zero and we've got a half x. So a half of negative one is negative a half. So negative a half plus one. What is minus a half plus one? That is a half. So zero and a half, zero is less than a half, isn't it? Zero is less than a half. So we're gonna have less than in that inequality there. So for line number two, we've got y is less than uh, a half x plus one. There we go, y is less than a half x plus one. And that was line number two. Uh, and obviously that should seem quite obvious as well because it is sort of below that line, okay? It's less than that line, It's the, the region is below it if you kind of look at it from above and below. So that should seem quite logical as well, but obviously do just test these coordinates out. And then for the last one, let's have a look at this last one here. So again, our coordinates negative one and zero, so y equals x, so y is zero, x is negative one, so which one is greater than which? Zero is greater than negative one. So we're gonna have greater than in that inequality. So for number three, we have y is greater than x, not zero. There we go, y is greater than x. Right, there we go, and that's the end of that one. Let's just get rid of these, get rid of some of this working, and let's just write the correct ones all down here. So for the first one there, we had uh, y is greater than negative two. We've got y is less than a half x plus one. And our third inequality, we've got y is greater than x. Now there's one more thing that we need to think about on this question. Now in this actual diagram here in the drawings, look, if we look at those lines, they are solid lines, not the dashed lines. So all of these inequalities here have to have the extra ink on them, okay? Just to obviously show that these lines are representing that they can be equal to as well. So we've got y is greater than or equal to negative two, y is less than or equal to a half x plus one, and y is greater than or equal to x, okay? So obviously just being very careful. I think in, in the exam, you may, you may may have been allowed this, okay, if this sort of question came up, you might just be allowed to get away with those inequalities, but um, obviously they would actually be incorrect, so I would suggest that you should actually be losing a mark if you're not getting those correct, so do watch out for that, do have a look and make sure that you are careful whether they are solid lines or whether they are the dashed lines. Just remember, obviously, if there is more ink on the line, more ink on the inequality. Okay, so there we go, that's the end of graphical inequalities. Hopefully you found that useful, hopefully it was helpful. Uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.